Yo, what's up guys? My name is Eric, and on today's video, I'm going to be going over how I built a budget and gaming PC. So first, get the motherboard and take it out of the box. Then you want to take it out of the plastic sleeve that it is in. Then set the motherboard down on the sleeve. Now get your CPU box and take out the stock cooling fan and the CPU. You want to take a look at the CPU and look at the marks made on the bottom side so you can see how you have to put it into the CPU socket on the motherboard. Now go to your motherboard and lift up the piece of metal to open up the socket. Take the CPU and place it down on the socket. No pressure is necessary. Now push the metal lever down down to secure the CPU. Next, it's time to add the CPU fan, so take that out and do not touch the bottom because there already is thermal paste applied to the fan for the CPU. Nicely place the fan on top of the CPU. Make sure the heatsink connects to the motherboard properly. Then push the plastic lever down to secure the fan. Now take the wire for the CPU fan and plug it into your motherboard. Now it is time to flip around our motherboard and install the RAM. So pop open the RAM slots, grab your RAM, then align it to the motherboard socket and push it in. Do the same for the second stick of RAM. Now it's time to grab our computer case. Start by unscrewing these screws to remove the side panels. Now find your motherboard's I.O. shield and put it in the back of the computer. You can use force here. Now find all these screws that your computer case came with and find these screws for your motherboard that look something like this. Then screw in the motherboard screws. You don't have to put them all in, but I did just because. Now you want to carefully place the motherboard in your computer case, carefully aligning it with these screws you just put in. You also want to make sure that all the ports align right right in the back. Now go back to the bag with all these screws and find the screws for your motherboard to secure the motherboard to the case. With the motherboard installed, now let's add the hard drive. Now I made a mistake when I built this computer. The RAM I got is way too big, so now I did have to remove the RAM to add the hard drive, and later on I did have problems with wiring the computer, so I had to actually modify my case and push the hard drive further in, which is not recommended. I just wanted to tell you that just in case you want to build this computer, just get a bigger case or get smaller RAM than mine. Anyway, once your hard drive is in place, you gotta screw it in on both sides. Now it's time for the DVD drive. Pop out the piece of metal and plastic on your computer case and shove in the DVD drive like so. Now line up the holes properly and screw it in on both sides. Now it's time to add the power supply, which I should have done earlier, but whatever. First, take the power supply out of the box, of course, and untangle all the wires because, well, there's a lot of wires you're gonna have to deal with. Carefully put the power supply in the case. Then, like everything else, find these screws and screw the power supply into the case. Once that's done, you're gonna have a giant mess of wires. Now before I wire all the power to this computer, I'm gonna look at the wires down below that are part of the case. These are the wires for the USB ports, the audio ports, the power and the reset button on the front panel of the case. Wiring these can be tricky, so I'm not gonna go over it, you're gonna have to look in your manual of your motherboard. Finally, before I wire the power to this motherboard, I'm gonna plug in the fans. For me, there are two sockets available for the fan, so just take a look because they are labeled. Now it's finally time to wire the power to this computer, so look for a connection similar to this. Split the wire in half, then plug it into the socket close to the CPU. Now find the huge power connector and plug it into the side of the motherboard since this will power the entire motherboard. Look for an L-shaped connector, this will go to the DVD drive and the hard drive. Now it's time to grab two SATA connectors because we have to plug in the DVD drive and the hard drive to the motherboard. Once everything is wired, we want to try and clean up all the wires with some zip ties. Our final thing to install is the wireless card. So pop out the piece of metal on the back, then take the wireless card and simply plug it into your motherboard. Like usual, screw it into place and finish it up by screwing in the antennas. Now that the PC is all built, go to the back and turn on the power supply, then click the button on the front and watch it turn on. If it did not turn on, there must be something wrong and you're gonna have to go over all your wiring and everything else again. But if your computer does work, then install an operating system. In my case, I'm installing Windows 8. 